Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. I just thought I would come on and share a little bit about my uh, the last two days perfume trip I did with a friend up north to this really special shop. Um, they have a rep website, it's called, it's called Fragrance and Art. It's .com if you want to guys want to check it out. I'm not sure what, what countries she ships to. I'm, I'm sure like not all, not all over the world, but I think it was to some other countries besides Sweden. Um, she's got a great selection and she opens the store only on like, by appointment. You have to make an appointment and our appointment was basically all day. So she opened the store for us from 10.30 to 5 and then we ended up staying to like 5.40. Um, basically until our train went back and so we, we took a train. It takes like three, four hours to get there. So we spent a night, one night in a hotel and then like the next day we were in the shop all day. Uh, okay, so I want to... I. I went, when I went to bed last night, I got home around midnight and I could not sleep. Um, the cat was missing, which also kind of amplified my anxiety, but I was having a really bad perfume hangover. And I'm not talking about, you know, just breathing in all these fumes all day long. It wasn't that, or that I've just, you know, sometimes I can get like that if I try too many perfumes and I can just feel like too many chemicals going on and stuff. But no, this was the emotional downside of purchasing too much um, and kind of, it, it was, it's not the money, it's really not the money, uh, like I have not, this doesn't have consequences for my overall economy, like I can't pay the rent or anything like that, it's not, it's not to that degree, um, but I, 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 first of all, I, um, I had sort of a budget and I went over that budget um, with like, 25% I think or something like that or even a little bit more than that which didn't feel right but I think mostly it's that I now own too many perfumes and I'm going too fast and also one thing that's really difficult when you go to a perfume shop and you don't know the perf you've never tried these perfumes before perhaps which was the case with many of them uh, you can't really get I do believe I think you should go and watch um, my world of fragrance you know Sam and watch her video about uh, don't make these mistakes in perfumery or something. And she has one one of her rules is only tr never try more than two fragrances at once. And I probably tried a hundred yesterday, maybe not on my skin, not all on my skin, but like I had my nose on. I mean, maybe not a hundred, but I mean it, up there definitely. And I kind of had my mind set on getting a bottle of Chameleon from Zoologist, so I had that idea, and a bottle of Bengal Rouge from Papillon. Those were my two kind of like I think I'm going to get those. Um, and the first thing I found out was that, uh, Chameleon was out of stock. And since it's so expensive with, with, uh, you know, like customs and postage and everything with the States and the, the Swedish crown is like an all time low, she tries to kind of synchronize her orders. Uh, so she wasn't planning on ordering. She wouldn't have gotten it in like in a few days. Cause if she had, maybe I would have, you know, waited to get my bottle of Chameleon. Cause I know I like it. I've been through at least two, three milliliters of it and I know it really works and I, I was just looking forward to it so much owning a bottle of that. Um, actually another friend from our community came into the store later and when she tried Chameleon, they had the tester bottle there, she said it does smell a little bit like urine so then I felt a little better about going home without it you know. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to say this because like this happens a lot when I buy perfume and especially if I buy like more than one bottle and that I haven't like especially when it's kind of a little bit on impulse. I mean, these weren't blind buys, obviously, because I tried everything, but it's really not possible to get a good opinion about a perfume when you're trying, well, other people are spraying things around you and you are spraying, you know, you got one thing here and you got one thing here and you've got here and here. And like, it's hard to first, in the beginning, I was like writing up on the strips, like inner left elbow, uh, you know, like I, I was kind of keeping track. And then I just realized it was just, I, I kind of got, I, I spiraled out of control. That's what I did. I don't, I'm not, Clara, my friend, is much more structured. She, she, she tries very few perfumes on skin, but she, and she's, she knows her own nose. She knows what she likes. What she does is pretty much, she just opens like, and she knows kind of what she likes and what she doesn't like. For me, it's like, but she also goes home with sometimes a bottle too many, you know, like it didn't work for her. She hadn't noticed, like recently, she's gotten really sensitive to these molecules like Ambroxan and Isoe Super. So some of the fragrances that she used to wear and enjoy, she can no longer wear. So these kind of things can happen as well. But, and it's really hard to, you know, evaluate a fragrance um, performance 
uh, and I have an example of that. So I, what I got, what I brought home with me yesterday, I am not sure that anything will really work out. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I have worn two of the fragrances this morning, and I really enjoy both of them, so, so far so good. And I also got some free bottles, like tester bottles, full, um, kind of because I purchased things, because she has things that she kind of, you know, like brands that she's getting, let, she's letting go of because they're discontinued. And sometimes, you know, there's an agreement with the, the different brands that she can't have, like an older, the tester bottle has to look like it's a special way or she can't have old stuff out. If there's a new formula of something, she has to, she can't, you know, use the old one and stuff like that. So, um, and at these kind of, these things might be a little hard to sell. Uh, so she kind of gives them to good customers, which I think is a really nice idea. And sometimes those giveaways or last year we paid a little, something for them um like fifteen dollars i think i paid for tester bottles last year and some of them have actually turned out to be you know like really good fragrances an example of that is last year i got as a tester bottle a fragrance from les indemudables I've, i think i have a, i've talked about this in a few videos and it's called escal en indonesie from les indemudables and it, the bottle looks like this and this year um that's a beautiful fresh ambergris cologne and this is kind of the same this is called escal on haiti um uh, like an over uh a layover in haiti like a a little you know trip to haiti whatever so um this is like beautiful citruses but it has vetiver in the base instead of ambergris so they're kind of similar i kind of knew how it would behave um, and I'm kind of getting a little bit more interested in the note of vetiver and i really wanted to go home with things that like would you know, complete my collection or fill a void rather than just get more of the same. I told my friend when I went in, don't let me get any more ambers. Don't let me get any more irises. I need, you know, newer, newer things, things that I, that don't, don't, are not similar to anything in my collection, which I kind of broke that rule a little bit. I'll get to that in a minute. But this is a really nice, fresh, uh, cologne, uh, that's a beautiful vetiver. And I wore it all over this arm this morning. And I got a really good five hours out of it, and I can still smell it now. And now it's been maybe like seven hours. It's still there, but I have to kind of go to my arm to get a whiff of it. But I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, this was $160, roughly. I think that the, maybe it would probably be more, considering the crown is so bad right now. But that just gives you an idea. So don't uh, take these um, price tags with, with a grain of salt. Okay, so what else I decided to get was this one I had already decided, I told you, Bang Bengal Rouge, which is a really heavy, dense, honey fragrance to me. But on the box, they kind of like uh, emphasized a few keynotes. They didn't mention the honey. They mentioned myrrh. They mentioned um, maybe balsamic notes. Uh, I'm not sure what they wrote. I think it even has, it has orris. It has, but this is not like an iris fragrance for sure. And this, but the weird thing is when I tried this in the beginning, and then I like, I was kind of walking around because I wanted to re-smell it because I hadn't smelled it for a while, but I've been through a decant of it and I really learned to love it. It wasn't a love at first sniff at all because it's really kind of heavy and natural honey. Uh, and it has a little bit of an animalic undertone. Uh, but when I sprayed this on my hand and I put my nose like this, I get kind of a plastic feeling. And I just realized though that with some fragrances, maybe all fragrances, they shouldn't be sniffed like this. You know, you have to kind of, that's not how you experience a perfume. You experience it from a little bit of a distance. So it's better to do this or, you know, like you should walk around and wear it and experience what it, how it behaves. So this, I think I'll be really happy with. I think this was a, f a fairly unrisky choice that I made. So I don't feel bad about this. This one I feel maybe a little bit bad about because I don't think I'll wear it so much since we have, I think I'll wear it on hot days and we don't have that many hot days. And I have, another, I have a bunch of other fragrances that work on hot days now. So maybe that was a purchase too many. And this is, okay, here's one fragrance that I was really worried about, like not liking. And I don't really know yesterday why I picked this one out, but it, I did, actually I wore it this morning and I really have enjoyed it. But I think, I still don't know if it's going to be something that I will pick up, you know, regularly. And this is a new brand. And I think this is what got, got me. Uh, this brand, um, they were at the Milano Exence. Is it called Exence? This big fair they have. 
It's a, it was founded in Germany. It's called Wesker, the brand. I think the brand is on, where does it say Wesker here? Yeah, in this little kind of thing here. Uh, and it was founded in Germany by two guys, the perfumers and the founders. The, um, but they're not German. They One of them is from Serbia. The other one is from Croatia. I think they now, um, they were in Germany when they started the company. I think they've moved back home to either one of the countries. I can't remember which. And these are all like handmade bottles, which I normally don't really care about. And I think that this putting a little crystal you see on the top there is really unnecessary. Like I'd rather pay less and have something in a really simple bottle. Like just, to me, this is just fine. Um, or I like cylinder shaped, you know, like the Christian Dior Privé line. That's like about the only thing I like about that line is their presentation. Basic, simple cylinder, just simple label. It, you know, there's no fuss. It's, it's just all, it's just classy, minimalistic. I like that. This is a little, this is so, this is, really isn't my style. Um, but I kind of wanted to get something from a new house and we were kind of sniffing all of these and I, I'm kind of into green fragrances right now. And I, yesterday when I tried this on, this is called Histria, Histria. They have five fragrances in their collection. Uh, the one who's like the most famous, the one that came out first or famous, I don't think there's that famous, but it's called L'eau de Mystique, I think like mysterious water, which is like a kind of an amber honey fragrance with I can't remember exactly what's in that, but uh, my friend Clara got a bottle of that. And she's not really a honey kind of girl, but she really liked this one. But I have the feeling that she's going to really like this one in the long run, and I might prefer hers. I don't know. We'll see. But we can probably swap a decant so we both can try each other's fragrances. And we didn't get any of the same fragrances, which I really am happy about. Uh, we do have some, you know, that we both have. Uh, she had she got a bottle of Escala en Indonesia, which she has tried from my bottle before and really, really loves as well. So now we both have that. But, okay, so this fragrance, yesterday when I tried it on, I was kind of getting like a green fragrance with a kind of a prominent note of orange blossom. But now, like, and then kind of toward the end when I was kind of retrying it, trying to, trying to like confirm, should, should I buy it? Should I not? Should I get this one? Should I get that one? I, I, I kind of got this indolic jasmine note. Um, and I can kind of smell that off the top when I just do like this, which is kind of strange to me because today when I wore it, all I'm getting is like incense, um, which I don't even know if it's listed, uh, and all these like piney notes, like I still have it on my, this is an x-ray. So I put like four sprays on at eight o'clock in the morning. It's still here for sure. But I got in the car this morning, I was going somewhere. And I had, it was so, this, this is really, it's pretty potent, this fragrance. And it's like, it's it's a foresty fragrance to my nose. It's like, I mean, I think there's some citruses on the top. It has orange blossom. It has, it has all these herbs. It has like sage, rosemary. It has a note of elderflower. And elderflower is something that we in Sweden make this like fruity, like a, like a sugary drink from. Um, like the blossoms, we'll cook them with sugar and make a special drink. And they grow here in the Nor in the Nordic countries. I'm sure they grow down, you know, like in the e in Eastern Europe too, where these guys are from. Um, I, I can't pick that out, but like, there was definitely a floral aspect. But today, when I tried it, I got mostly pine. Like, it's it's really really green and foresty and piney to my nose. And in that way, it really is something different in my collection. But I'm still kind of worried that I'm like not going to pick this. Like my arm will not go out and pick this uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like I'm not going to wear this weekly or anything. And I'm kind of like wondering, you know, why did I get it? But the, the price point of this was pretty good. It's like a, a little more than $150 or 150 euro for 50 mil, which I think is a good price. And I think the, the, the bottle is, is pretty, but I think they put a little bit too much work into it for my taste. And I guess they're both their signatures there. On the, on the, and one of these fragrances is like a transparent on the side. I wish that this one had also been that because I like to see how much I have left. I have to remember to weigh this bottle before I start using it. I've only taken four sprays, but I'm going to weigh it. And I'm going to put a little sticker underneath. And then uh, if I want to sell it someday, I can see how much I have left. I can sort of figure it out, at least roughly, so I can tell someone. If someone trusts me, they'll, they will, they might buy it, you know? And then I got... Uh, first I made like a whole purchase and then after that we kind of hung around for a while 
and then I made another purchase. That was that's when I kind of really exceeded my budget. And I would I got another vetiver fragrance from Nikolai. I decided to give Nikolai as a house another chance. I had before before this I had only tried two fragrances, and one of them is was called was Sacre Bleu Intense, which I didn't like. And then I tried something called Sucre, like something sugar or something. I can't remember which one, but I didn't like any of them because I felt that they were fragrances that kind of scream at you, you know, like screamy fragrances, like too loud, too too sweet, I think. Too loud and sweet as a combo is not that great for me. But this one isn't. This is a good, like, basic vetiver. And that's kind of what I was after. I mean, so this is like both, it's like a little bit soapy and clean and kind of like laundry-like, but it also has like a powderiness that it doesn't go too masculine. It's, I think I'm really going to enjoy you know, getting to know vetiver. Now I have like a really light freshy, and I have something a little bit more French style, powdery, uh, perfumey per, uh, vetiver. So I think this will be a great start on my journey into the vetiver territory. So very happy about that. Then I should have stopped right there, but I didn't. And I decided to go back to Papillon and pick this up as well, which is a, a fragrance called Angelique. And um, it's an iris fragrance, really beautiful powdery with mimosa and osmanthus. And osmanthus is, uh, if you know my channel, I don't like, I don't love osmanthus usually, but I think it works in this fragrance. This is really, really soft and beautiful and powdery. I just sprayed this just a little while ago. I made a video on my Swedish uh, Facebook group telling them a little bit about my my visit to the store and they were all curious. You know, it's not that far away. They can go there if they want. Um, it's really pretty, but I think this is a little bit mixed now with the vetiver because I'd sprayed that as well and then I, I sprayed a little of this Angelique. But uh, I think I'll really enjoy this and this will give me a good chance to like, you know, give the house a chance. And this one's a little bit cheaper. Like these are like $175 or euros. A, yeah, something like that. And these, this is more like 145 or 150, which is a little bit cheaper. Um, this is weak, though. This is this is this was the example that I had about like it's really hard to judge, you know, to or to evaluate the performance of a perfume when you're trying a hundred things at the same time. It's I would say it's impossible. And I looked at for granted. A lot of people were complaining about about the performance of this, so I should have tried. I'm going to get back to you. Consider all of this, you know, just first impressions. Actually, the purpose of this video is that I wanted to share my terrible, terrible anxiety and hangover that I had from going too far yesterday with my purchases. And I want this channel to be about like I don't want you guys to do this. And I'm I'm like kind of trying because I think that's what anxiety is when you have this like kind of a bad feeling, but you can't quite pinpoint what the bad part is. Like, it's not the money really. It's more like acquiring things that I might not use. And like now my, my I, I now have 56 full bottles of perfume, which I feel is just, I don't want to be at that number. Um, I will never, I'm going too fast. I don't have time to digest, you know, I'm going, but of course I don't go to this shop every day. I didn't want to go all the way there, spend two whole days and then come home with one bottle. That would have also felt bad, and I also feel really good about, you know, giving this woman, her name is Polina, uh, she's from Ukraine, and she's she's so sweet, and she's so passionate about perfume. I, I feel so good about giving her my business, and coming together with another person, and then two more people came, and we all spent money, and uh, I mean, I think it was a pretty good business day for her. I have no idea what she sells in a day. She's mostly a web shop, um, and she doesn't open the shop, but it required her to be there a whole day as well. And she didn't get any other work done. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm glad we gave her some decent business because she kept the shop open just for four people. So, so that's good. But I think that the feeling is, it go, the ownership kind of goes against my values a little bit, especially like owning things that I will not use. If I, if I end up using all of these, then I'll be fine with it. But like, if I use all of these, then there'll be other fragrances in my collection that I won't use. And speaking of owning too many irises, okay, say that this will be my favorite. Then there are gonna be at least like three in there that will not get used. Then those will be untouched. So I am beyond a point where I'm comfortable. I need to let things go. Um, I think like maybe it's really hard to sell things secondhand here in Sweden now. Like our country is small, our population is small. The, number, the, the percentage of people who are into niche perfume is like so small microscopical I think it's it's just like no no one knows these fragrances like nobody would know I mean I put this out no one would 
I mean, in our groups, yes, but um, it, it's hard to get more than like 50% of the of retail price, I think. Uh, and things go on sale, so people know that, so they look at the best price possible, and then they want like 50-60% of that. They don't want to pay more than that. And then it kind of hurts to let things go. So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I have some odd fragrances that are really hard to get get rid of. And I don't want to, I don't want to just, you know, I, I would actually like to give them to someone if I knew that people would love it. But sometimes I give things away, like to family members or friends, and then I just kind of, I see it, in, you know, I see it later maybe in their bathroom and they haven't touched it. You know, like they don't, and then they're still using their old designer stuff anyway. So, you know, I want them to appreciate it. Otherwise, I just kind of wait until I can find someone who really appreciates it. Okay, before I, th that was, okay, so those were my purchases. I got five bottles, uh, the two uh, from Papillon, the one from Wesker called Histria, and then I got the Vetiver from, from Nikolai. These are quite inexpensive, and this is a 30 mil bottle. This was like under 60 bucks. This was like, 50, yeah, about $60, which I think is a really good price for the quality. And then I got this one, Escal on Haiti. I don't know how you say Haiti in in um, Haiti in, in French. I really want to learn. I've, I have a 68 day streak, I think, or something now on Duolingo. So I'm getting there, but I still haven't like, you know, we're still working on he and she and what different forms of, you know, common verbs and stuff. I'm not into like everything. I know how to say Mexico, but you know, things like that. We haven't gone through the whole world yet. Uh, what she does though, this uh, owner of the store is like when people... Um, last year we paid like a small sum for test tester bottles and some of them ended up being actually have become favorites of mine uh, this year she gave them away with, with with our purchases so she said I could pick these two and I picked and these I don't really know much about but I have this and it's called L'Ombre de Cartage and it's from the house of Isabelle Isabelle um, so this is kind of like a new, this is an amber uh, that was marketed towards men. And they have now, they only offer their fragrances now in 50 and 10 milliliter bottles. So I think what she's getting rid of is the all the hundreds. So this is a hundred mil bottle. And since it's a tester, it has the little, which I like actually, the notes on the back. And this has no rose, which really, uh, I'm really happy about. In the heart, it has a labdanum, um, osmanthus and patchouli. And then it had, what was else was interesting? It has jasmine tea and birch in the top, which I thought was interesting. I haven't given this like a full wear. This might end up being like a real favorite. I don't find it overly masculine. I can't really see why it would be marketed towards men because it's kind of like, it's kind of like a dry amber, kind of like the Andy Tower one or Amber Sultan or Amber 114 from, from uh, Histoire de Parfum maybe. It, it, I think I'm gonna like this. I think it, when I I just need to you know try it all by itself. Um, bottles are kind of like you see they're kind of different. Um, and then also I picked this out. This is the older formula of Dodo, uh, and this is not my typical fragrance. But since I loved the zoologist and there was only one zoologist on the table there of the things she was kind of like, get, there, there, there's a new formula. That's why she she wants to let this one go because she's not allowed by the brand to have this out. Uh, because it's not the same. And I think this one got a really bad, this one has a bad reputation. It only has an, a, an average of 3.27 on Fragrantica. And it's, I'm just going to spray it now just to remember. I took it kind of because, because I love zoologists and the sprays. And I, I think they're fun to discover things in. They have all these layers. And I would not have paid full price for this. Um, and I'm kind of reading the reviews on Fragrantica on the way home yesterday on the train. I was laughing because some people said it smelled like kind of rotten feathers and rotten goose eggs, whatever. I guess it is a kind of a bird dodo. You can see the picture there. And I don't really know what dodo. I'd have to look that up. I, I haven't, you know, dug into this yet. But it has like little fruits like lychee in the top. Um, I think there's some like pine type uh, notes in here some herbs. I mean, it's a fougere. And I find it kind of fresh and playful, but I don't like all of zoologist fragrances. I tried, you know, cockatiel, which is another bird fragrance, uh, which is really strange. It has a terrible rhubarb note together with a 
overly sweet something going on too. I can't remember the notes there, but and I also tried B yesterday, which is a, like a really a honey pollen type fragrance. I think it might have mimosa as well. It's really, really hardcore honey. Um, yeah, I tried Elephant too, and I really kind of enjoyed trying that one. It was very green. I think it had a coconut note, which I'm kind of, in the summer, I always kind of enjoy uh, coconut. It can't go overboard, though. It has to be just a hint. Um, and I also tried some some pretty heavy-duty Shepras, like the Sacred Scarab, which I was really enjoying, but I felt like I didn't dare buy it because it was so, like, so mossy and, and green and kind of earthy. So I, I'm kind of like, because I remember I had it right here. Uh, another really hardcore one, and I think I've heard Ramsey talk about this one uh, from Papillon, is Dryad. And Dryad, I was kind of like, I had it right here, kind of for a long time yesterday. Um, like three times I went to her into her bathroom, the owner there of the shop, and kind of soaked up my arms all the way to here. And just kind of, because I had fragrances like all the way down. Um, and, and she... Um, what was I going to say about, oh yeah, Dryad. And I, I, I was kind of almost planning on getting it because I was just really enjoying these like, these green notes. And, um, but then my friend said that I smelled like a goat, that it smelled like the fur of a goat. And I just, I just couldn't take that risk. I, I got scared. You know, I don't, that's not the way I want to, uh, come across it. I don't want it to be too strange, you know, like to smell too much like an animal. Um, maybe next time I'll be more ready for it. I tried Anubis as well, which was very leathery. I think I'll end up not wearing it. I mean, I thought it was really nice. I tried also, um, what's it called? Salome, or was it Spell 125? I mixed those up. Um, the two animalic, two animalic. I, so I, I wasn't, I think these two are the easiest ones to like um, in, in her collection of fragrances. And then there's this floral called Hera, which is really beautiful, but it's so expensive. That was like over 300 and they're all 50 ml bottles. Um, but I don't think I need another beautiful floral, uh, and that it, for the price, I just didn't, I almost didn't let myself try it because I, it was over my, then I could have picked so little out. So, um, yeah. And what else did I try yesterday that was interesting? There's like a, like a like a side project of someone from Guerlain called like my ex, my exclusive collection or something with three fragrances that I was kind of you know trying for a while one I didn't like two I did like but then I decided finally that I found them too too designery one had kind of a colony note um, I'll try to think of the name in a minute something twelve twenty six Renata twelve twenty six maybe. I'll put it in the comment, or I'll put it in the in the description box. I'll look it up. And that had kind of a coconut note, and it was a little bit tropical. Uh, so that one kind of caught my attention. And then there was one called Spring Follies that was more of a straight-up floral, if I remember correctly. But those were 100 ml bottles, and I really don't want to buy 100 ml bottles. But had those been 50, then I might have replaced one of those with this, because I think that those were really nice, easy reaches, like things that I could wear every day kind of like Artemisia. Um, I find that I sometimes like to have bigger bottles of these easy kind of fragrances that I can just always wear and always feel fresh and clean and feminine. And so I think that they would fit in. I think I would have worn them, but I, I was just, I, I was a little worried to get bored. Um, and then I would be stuck with a hundred mil bottle and I didn't really want that to happen. Yeah, that was it. They also had Exidolo that was four fragrances that were really nice. So they have a great amber called Rider. There's another uh, really sugary fragrance, but nicely made, called Love and Crime. That reminds a little bit of Aqua e Suquero, which I think is too sweet for me. But if for those of you who are listening, you might want to check it out. They come in these little 30 mil, I think they're x-rays. Um, they look like the dark fragrances. There's a leather fragrance too called 33. They're really dense looking, at least the darker ones. Um, I knew I was, I was standing with this rider and when I was in Warsaw thinking about getting it and I know I know a guy who, who really really highly recommends it but I you know I'm all full up on ambers I don't need a single amber so I I, I, I outdid myself with the spending now I need to let go I'm gonna have to think through my my be my perfume behaviors I'm just right now listening to a really entertaining but serious book um, by Russell Brand you know the British comedian and actor uh, he is you know like a 
drug addict and uh, re but recovered recovered you know drug alcohol sex um, food I I mean he as he explains it he's he's addicted to everything and um, his idea on addiction that doesn't regard substances if it's behaviors and I find my perfume behavior it's not only shopaholism shopahol how do you say it shopaholism um, but there's that component. That I, you know, my urge to buy is sometimes, you know, will, will be more powerful than me because I it, it makes me behave in a way that I don't like. But there's also like how much time do I spend? So I think I need. And he said, if you have if you have an addiction that regards that that's about be some kind of behavior, whether it being you know sexual behavior, you're in the you date the wrong kind of men or women or. Uh, you have a certain, you know, scrolling on your phone, which is another addiction that I do have and that I struggle with, where the phone sometimes is more powerful than what I really, the person I want to be. Like, especially at night, if I don't have anything booked, I'm hanging out on my own. Um, yeah, so if you have these problems, you need structure. If you have uh, addiction to substances, you have to quit. There's no question. You know, if you are an alcoholic, you can't drink. If you're a drug addict, you can't do drugs just on occasion. It's not going to work. You'll get right back in there. But when it comes to like food, we all have to eat. If it comes to like shopping, we all have to shop. You know, we need structure. And I kind of like that description. I hope it gets more into how, what works with that because, but I've noticed before that I have to sometimes just forbid myself to buy. I have to go on no buys and I can do like three months here. I think I did six months once, did I? I'm trying to think. I've, did, I've done longer periods of time and I've really, it's been really nice. I felt more relaxed. Um, I can still swap. I can swap decants. I can swap bottles. I just can't buy bottles. And then I've done another idea I have for myself is like I, I'll go on a no buy, but I'll, I'll let myself buy if I see, for example, Blanche Bet for a uh, under retail price or something like that, or like Cacao Porcelana. If I see a decant of that, like nobody's splitting that. I can't get a hold of that. Um, they do have 10 milliliters. I found a Czech website that sells 10 milliliters of that, of that, so I can get it. But like, some I'll, I might have some. I might have like a no buy with a few exceptions. I think that's what I'll do. And then, or until I sell, if I let go of six bottles, then I'll be down to 50, and then I want to stay there. So I don't know what I'm going to do about like the rest of the summer because I still might want to add Blanche Bet to my collection, and maybe I'll let myself have that as my last one for the summer. And perhaps maybe one more. I don't know. This is it's not it's not great. It's not a great feeling. I'm I'm at a too high a number, and I think this perfumes would be really hard to sell. And I mean, and thinking about like gifts, I don't know who I would you know gift a perfume um, that would appreciate it because I think that's important to not just give it away because like you know I, I as if I would take it to the rather than taking it to the dump, which I would never do because I do think that these have a value. Just that I may be done with things that I I just don't wear them. So um, if you have any ideas and how has it worked out for you, do you, do you ever have to give yourself rules? Do you have to um, go on no buys? Does that work? What is the worst part of spending too much? Is it the money? Is it, uh, you know, your, the, opinion, the, opinion, the opinion of your significant other? Um, like, what is it? Is it that you don't have enough money to spend on other things? Because for, for me, it's just kind of a guilty it's kind of a non, I can't quite define it. I just don't feel that it's right. That's how I feel. I think I don't feel that it's right, especially not with this much juice. Like had it been smaller, maybe, you know, like I will, but I will try to use this as like perfume currency and swap perfumes with others. Like, I think I definitely, um, like maybe I can get like a fiver of Dryad and uh, Anubis maybe if I, you know, let some of this go. Someone might be a Papillon fan out there and might want to swap a little with me or uh, someone might want a fiber of this and I can get something else. And that way I can always keep myself, you know, I can always have new fragrances to try. Yeah, so that was, um, yeah, that was like yesterday's. Oh, I really want to hear what you think of Dodo, if anyone knows uh, about this older formulation. If you go on Fragrantica, there, there are two different ones. So make sure you look at the right one. If you want to have a good laugh, you can go and look at the reviews of this. Um, I think it's really fresh and I don't usually like fruity fougeres, but this is like a fruity, bright, playful fougere. I think I'm going to enjoy this actually. I, I wouldn't have bought it, but I am kind of like, I kind of like having it. 
and especially I got it like as a as an add-on to my big purchase makes it feel a little bit better you know because I spent a fair amount of money so yeah that was that um, please feel free to comment do you also get perfume hangovers uh, and what does it feel like and how long do they last some see sometimes it even for me starts when I'm on my way home like I go to town I buy something that I haven't thought through it was a little bit on impulse. It was maybe I tried at the counter. I just bought. I just buy it, and I don't think about like I might be able to find this cheaper. I might be able to find the second hand. It might be too similar to something I already have. That's when I start feeling like this little bit guilt. It's kind of like sneaking up on me, bad feeling. Um, yeah. So then I know that. I don't know. This is. I think this is really interesting. This aspect of, and you know what? Sometimes this I think Russell Brand has touched upon in his book about recovery is that I sometimes I compare myself with other people in my community because most of the people in my community in the Facebook group that I like or my closest perfume friends they all have so many more perfumes than I do and I kind of justify spending because I know I'm not I don't have 500 perfumes I don't have a thousand perfumes I've got 50 I'm in the 50s anyway you know 56 perfumes um and then I kind of like Oh, but my problem's not so bad. You know, well, I don't have an addiction because I'm not at this point. But they've they've been in the game so many more years than I have. I've only been in the game for like four years. And I'm already at 56. So I can't go on like this. I have to like, I've got to find a better strategy. So I don't have any solutions for you guys. But me, you might have something to, you know, to, um, uh, to give me uh, as advice. Like, where were you at when you were four years into your, into this, you know, rabbit, <laughs> perfume rabbit hole? Uh, how did you handle it? Have you been able to declutter and stay at a certain point? Have any of you like really reduced your collection size? How did that feel? Did you regret it? Um, I would appreciate a discussion about this. That'd be great, great fun, or it would be interesting. It would be interesting to hear some of your views on on this. So this this uh, video wasn't really about these fragrances. It was more about the fact that I bought them all in one go. I wasn't sure that, like, I'm not sure that this iris fragrance will be right for me since I have so many others. Um, I might not even like it. Mimosa is not a favorite note of mine, and neither is Osmanthus. So I'm not sure what I did, you know. And Vetiver, I got like two, I spent, I mean, I spent like over $200 on Vetiver. Was that right for me? I'm not sure. You know, I could have maybe, to explore Vetiver, I should have bought a few decants. That would be have been a smarter way to start. So... Lessons learned, I think I should have planned my visit better to the store up there. Maybe I should have checked with her if my fragrances of choice were in stock prior to visiting, because then it wouldn't have been such a disappointment that they didn't have chameleon. Um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe, you know, maybe these fragrances will be perfect. Who knows? So we'll see. I'll get back to you on these. I'll make better in-depth reviews on these fragrances. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to try them. I feel much better today. You know, it was late. I, I think I hadn't had enough to eat yesterday. Uh, we had done too much sitting. I don't, I don't. It's really hard for me to sit too many hours. The cat had, was gone. The cat hadn't um, had been gone like for twelve hours straight because no one was home here at dinner time. And I guess he probably took off somewhere else to find food. Maybe he hunts instead. But I couldn't fall asleep because he wasn't home. And two bikes were broken. It just kind of, you know, the, the problems kind of just. I, I just lay there for so long uh, with this bad anxiety. Um, but I'm better now. So yeah, this is not an all too serious video. I'm not super unhappy. It's not like I have mental health issues right now, but it did hit me this really shitty feeling of being hungover. Um, and you don't need alcohol to get hungover. You can get hungover from other things as well. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Please comment. All right. That was all for now.